Barry Gibb has never done this before, never taken the long walk to the stage by himself. Is it important for you to do this? Yeah, it's everything to me. It's all I've ever known. I don't know how to do anything else. <laughs> you do this one pretty well, though. <laughs> I can't get a job. <laughs> He's the only surviving member of one of the 20th century's greatest vocal groups. And this night, at the TD Garden in Boston, he's about to begin his first ever solo tour. The last of the Bee Gees is going it alone. It's just your job. I don't think anybody thought at this point in time that there would be one BG left. None of us. I could never have imagined being sort of that last person. We were glued together. Those three kids that knew something nobody else knew, that one day we would make it. I remember saying it to one of my first girlfriends at 14 years old, mm -hmm. that if she dumped me, she was making a mistake because I was going to be famous. I actually said that. But more importantly, you believed it. I believed it, yeah. And I don't know why. Even in the early days, in Australia, the three Gibb brothers, Barry and younger twins Robin and Morris, had their own distinct sound. The Bee Gees went on to perform, write, or produce 15 number one hits. Their Saturday Night Fever soundtrack was a pop masterpiece that spent six months at number one and sold some 40 million copies. That album was recorded in Miami. Did you just sort of fall in love with it when yeah. you were here? Yeah, we fell in love with the sky. You fell in love with the sky? Yeah. And uh, do this Yeah. Barry and his wife Linda moved here in the late 70s. It was Linda who recently pushed her husband to get back out on the road. I was fed up with him sitting on his ass. <laughs> He was miserable. Yeah. He was? Yeah, I yeah. think after Morris died, he kind of went into a bit of a depression. Yeah. And he just moped around, and I thought, well, and he sit and sing and sing, and yeah. Yeah. sounds so fantastic. I thought, what are you doing, doing nothing? Morris was just 53 when he died suddenly from a tangled intestine in 2003. The Gibbs had already lost their youngest brother, Andy who died 15 years earlier after a long battle with drugs. But Morris's death would divide the two surviving members of the Bee Gees, as Barry and Robin both admitted in this 2009 interview. You said you were afraid of him? I think we were both afraid of each other. I knew where Barry was emotionally. Um, I knew that his huge way of expressing himself was uh, by, by not going for it, by, by, by not uh, being a Bee Gee. I wanted to keep the Bee Gees as the, as the three of us. I wanted that to be the only thing anyone ever saw again. After a long hiatus... I'm going back to Massachusetts. That day in 2009, in Barry's home studio in Miami, he and Robin dusted off some of the Bee Gees' biggest hits for us. You don't know what it's like. Somebody. This session would be the last time the two brothers would sing together. Boy, yeah, it was better than even I get nostalgic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I really do. It's sad that the two, the voices together sound great. It's a magic, yeah. I knew then. I knew then he wasn't well. I started a joke, which started the whole world crying. I just knew that there was something really holding him down. You know? uh -huh. Everything to him seemed to be a little bit more of an effort than I'd ever known it to be. Till I finally died, which started the whole world living. In 2012, Robin would die of cancer. I told Robin before he died, you know, it came true. It came true. Stop worrying about it. Stop thinking you have to do something else again to put the lid on it. And he was always searching for that. Well, maybe we can just get one more hit, you know? And I was like, 
But the dream, the dream came true, Rob. It's OK. No, no, nobody sings like you. So it's we like... We get together. We should get together. <laughs> we should have lunch. <laughs> Do you feel like the dream came true? Uh, for the Bee Gees, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, what about for you? Well, that remains to be seen. The voice is still unmistakable, especially the infamous falsetto he first used on Nights on Broadway. If I want my falsetto to happen, I have to start screaming in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing in there? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> but that works. That keeps it alive. It certainly does. <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing? Three years ago when we were here and you brought it out again, I was like, you, you sort of said, see, it's still there. It's still there, yes. It's there if I want it. When Gibb began to consider a solo tour, he reached out to his oldest son, Stephen, a heavy metal guitarist. Was he at all reticent to go out there on his own? There's a certain almost nakedness that he felt, and sure, there's a risk involved. He's a 67-year-old pop icon, and he's like, do people care still? As well as his son, Stephen, Gibb is joined on stage by his niece, Morris's daughter, Samantha. For you, what's been the best part of this? Performing with him. They sing, How Can You Mend a Broken Heart, together. <laughs> I'll walk off after a moment of doing How Can You Mend and I'll cry, but I'm happy. We're looking at each other and we're both like healing and we're also grieving when we sing. Please me mend my broken heart and let me live We both struggled after my dad too, so it was a great way to um, Okay. Um, it was just a great way to connect because we hadn't done that. So. What have you seen in your father as you've toured together that you maybe hadn't seen before? Emotional vulnerability. He was always a very emotionally in control person. You know, I never really saw him um, break. And when, when he lost Robin, I think he thought it was okay to just feel mm -hmm. it's just part of life. I think that he's become a stronger man spiritually as a result of getting more comfortable with, with that. Now, people may not see it, but I, I see it. Where is the girl? On stage, Gibbs says, he has trouble looking over his shoulder when his brother's pictures are flashed on screen. How much do you miss your brother's voices out there? Well, it's, it's an everyday thing. It's every day and it's every night. It never goes away. I don't know why I'm, I'm the only one left. I, I'll never be able to explain that. It'll always hurt, and I'll always have great, joyful memories. The eldest is now the last. Barry Gibb may have lost his band of brothers, but he's finding the audience is still with him. How does that feel? Sort of like a rebirth. It's a great therapy, and you just feel alive, and it's about seizing that now. I'm staying alive. 